Form Labs just sponsored my brother and I with the Form 4L, which is debatably the world's best resin 3D printer. Today I'm going to show you how we use it, but I do warn you that this is a $25,000 package and while that might not be affordable for the average hobbyist, they do have a smaller version which is much cheaper yet just as capable. Temporarily, I've shoved everything inside of a cabinet, but we need a big table. While the print volume on this machine is crazy large, you're also going to need a crazy amount of space in your shop. Let's start by looking for an appropriate desk for this. After shopping around for a while, I came across this FlexiSpot E7 Plus table. While I've heard of this company, I never knew that they had such large tabletops, which are also fit for these very large loads. This makes it perfect for our Form 4L printer and curing station setup. I got the 38 inch by 78 inch desktop so that we have spare room to work on the side when we remove the prints from the printer. This was the largest rising table I found anywhere online so it will have to do. This table also comes way up over my neck. This desk is extremely stable when it moves up and down. Here's a glass of water stability test as proof. That is exactly what we want when we have our liquid resin inside of the printer. Speaking of which, I've already gone ahead and installed the resin tank into the printer and I have to say this is by far my favorite design for a resin tank on a Formlab printer. Once you push the resin tank into the printer, you simply lock it into place with these two two locks and that's it. There's also this mixer that you have to put in there and that just drops into place. You lock it and we're ready to print. So let's move on to the resin. Looking at the side of our printer, we just grabbed the resin of our choice. Here I'm using the clear resin V5. You give it a good shake and then you just drop them right into there. One thing they seem to have implemented on this printer, which I really like, is load cells to weigh the amount of resin actually left, as opposed to just assume or calculate how much resin should be left in your bottle. This really allows you to drain the bottles all the way down before you get an alarm saying, hey, your resin bottle is empty. Before we actually start printing, we're gonna need to open up these two bottle caps. And that's it, we're ready to upload our file. To do this, we open up Preform, which is the official Formlab slicer. We then import our models, and then we click on this one-click setup, which is absolutely amazing. It takes just a few seconds and our print is ready to go. Now we can zoom in and inspect our model if we think we need to. In my case, it looks good. These are the print validations, which show me that I have a cup detected. I think it's fine, but before we print now, check out this summary box they offer on the bottom left. It shows us the estimated time to print and the volume of resin expected. That's awesome. Let's send this to the printer. As soon as we press the start button, you can see the print bed descend down to the resin tank and the resin preparations begin. So what are we making here? Well, I've successfully demonstrated that you can use Injecto, our desktop plastic injection machine, to use FDM 3D printed molds and inject plastic into them to make plastic parts. So is there a benefit to using a resin printer over these FDM molds? Well, the answer is we're about to find out, but realistically, yes, there should be. Why? Well, first of all, printing one set of these FDM molds takes me about 12 hours. Over here, you saw that we were quoted three and a half hours. Now that said, I could probably fit about four sets of molds into a single print, which means each mold will take less than an hour on average to make. So back to the printing, this setup looks cool in the dark and since I'm using clear resin, I'm able to see the UV light coming through the bottom. But do you see that quick flicker of light? Why does that happen at each layer? I have no idea. When the print is done, the bed rapids up to the top and a cute sound is played. To get the prints out, I just slide to unlock and then we can pull the print bed out. And there are prints. They look awesome, so we're gonna pull them off to the side and place them on this tray that was included with this kit by Formlabs. We also got this other tool which attaches onto the edge of the table and allows us to much more easily rip off the prints from the print bed. These prints look very clear, which I love, but I do question whether they'll remain this clear after the wash and then curing process. So only one way to find out, let's rip them off. This is garbage. Formlabs also recommends washing the surface of these plates between each use, so I'm going to do that using some isopropyl alcohol and paper towel and just repeating as often as I need to until I get a very smooth and clean surface again. All right, let's put this back. 
So we just ripped all the parts off of the print bed and we noticed a lot of resin that spilled onto here, despite the fact that I actually left the print bed in the printer overnight so that all the resin would drip off. Well, I just noticed that Formops actually has a hook in here, which we did not get to use, allowing you to put the print bed at an angle and drip as to not waste this very expensive resin. So now we know, I didn't get to test this, but we'll do it in our next round of prints. Another quick note here, you saw me wiping down with paper towel and I just noticed I have a lot of hairs and residue left over on the print bed, which is eventually going to make its way into our resin. Now I see why Formlabs gives you lint-free paper towels with the kit. When you run out of these, you're gonna need to find a new source for them or you risk this contamination. So this is just an FYI. Moving on to the Form Wash L, we have the top hatch here, which reveals our washing chamber. This machine is significantly better than all other washing stations I've ever used before. Granted, it's much larger, much more impressive, much more expensive. But to start off, we have these two tabs over here that you can install however you'd like. The different sizes, different locations are used for different size building platforms from different generations of the printers. And here's an example of how my Form 4L build platform would sit in there and then it would move up and down like so. Now, of course, we have nothing on this build platform right now, but my personal preference is not to wash the build platform itself, but rather take off the parts from the build platform after printing and then drop them right into this basket. So that's what we're going to do. And this is why I like that Formlabs also has this option to drop your parts right into the basket and then wash them directly from there. So let's go ahead and remove these for the build platform. If I go ahead and lower this back down, it's going to open up our solvent chamber and you're gonna see that there's no solvent in there because we haven't filled it in yet. So we're gonna do that together right now. The best way to do this is to open up the front hatch on this machine and locate the transfer pump that Formlabs provides. This pump would drop directly into our isopropyl bottle and transfer the IPA through this tube right into our chamber. Now, since this is such an expensive setup, I actually went ahead and bought 99% IPA. I believe Formlabs recommends 91% or greater, but at the very minimal added cost, I'd recommend just getting 99%. Formlabs also has their own washing solvent, which uh, you're free to check out. I will not be using that here today. So let's start the transfer. In looking at this as I'm opening up my IPA bottle, I also think that perhaps this transfer pump would be better to get the dirty solvent out of here because I can just spill it directly into the chamber. So there is a minimum solvent and a maximum solvent line on the back plate here. Over here is maximum. We're currently right there and the minimum is just below that. So I think we're pretty good with that. We only used five gallons, but I'm only printing small parts, which will definitely submerge in the bottom of this basket. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's do this. I'm going to raise the platform. Now I'm going to grab our two mold halves, which are very slimy with resin currently. Place them right in the bottom over here. Lower this and we can get started. Great, we'll close that up and we'll be back in 10 minutes. We have just seconds left here. I left the top lid of the machine closed because it's pretty heavy and I wanted to see how this piece of equipment handles this situation. So let's see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Cool, so it does open the lid on its own. I did, however, notice that this did not tilt as I promised you it would. And looking here in settings, there is an option to turn that on. I've turned it on, perhaps it'll work the next time. So where are we with this process? Well, in my hands, I have the two mold halves which were washed and then allowed to dry in air. And I must say they feel very dry and solid, unlike the cheaper resins that would come out feeling a little bit more tacky when using the cheaper printers. So I do like this, but we do have to cure them in here in order to make them harder and usable as final parts. So if we take a look at the screen, the first thing we need to do is click on here and select the resin or material that we will be using. 
Now, funny enough, I was not able to find the clear V5 resin. So I'm going to assume that if I go to clear and then select the clear V4, it would be sufficient for our purposes. So it looks like it's going to cure for 15 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. And there's a little bit of a preheat set in here. I can always just change the preheat to whatever I want, but I'm going to leave it at the manufacturer settings. When I opened the curing chamber for the first time, I just fell in love with it. I love the four or 5,000 K LED lights that they have in here. It looks super super futuristic and there's a ton of space in there. So I just placed my two mold halves in there. We close the door, we press start and it just starts glowing and spinning. Now we wait about 20 minutes for the preheating and then the actual cycle and our parts should be ready to be injected into with Injecto. All right, the cure cycle is finished. And when I open this up, if you recall, I was skeptical on how clear these parts will come out. But note that you can actually see my fingers behind the molds, which is pretty cool. If I pull them back a few centimeters, they disappear. But I wonder if I can just polish the back with some sort of a polymer polish, if it would come out super clear. So that's something to try one of these videos. So bringing over our final molds, let's talk about the pros and cons between our resin prints and our FDM prints. While it's hard to see on camera, the obvious difference is that the layer height on these is about 100 microns. And for this, it was about 200 microns. So the resolution here is much finer and can also go down to about 50 microns. So that's definitely definitely a winner. Now one thing that I did not expect is that these FDM prints actually came in with tighter tolerance than this here. When I measure left and right and up and down on these molds, I get average deviation of about 50 microns, whereas for the resin prints, I actually get a deviation of about 200 microns. What does that mean? Well, when we try to insert our molds into the mold backing here, our FDM prints fit pretty well, as you can see in both axes. That's a pretty tight fit. But these resin prints, I actually can't get them to fit in in either direction. So that's easy enough to solve. We just need to sand down each side by about 100 microns or 4 thou. But I still was expecting a little bit better. Of course, you can just model this into your design. But given how high the resolution is for the actual mold cavities in here, I'm just curious why the outside isn't as precise. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments. Regardless, let's sand these down, insert them into our mold backers, and then see how we can inject into them with our Injecto. Sanding these was really easy. I just touched each of the four sides to the sanding belt and now they fit perfectly. How do I know that? Well, I cheated and I've already pushed one of the mold halves into the mold backers. Let's grab the other mold backing here, take our other mold half and then push it right in, it should slide in perfectly. And it did. Now we bring the two mold halves together and we should have a perfect plastic injection cavity. And now we're ready to inject with Injecto. What I like about the clear molds is that you can actually see the molds fill in through this little hole. All right, our injection's done. Let's focus on opening up these molds now. So we can just undo the thumb screws, open up the latches. Whoa, that looks awesome. I can already see a tiny bit of deformation on the outsides of the cavity. And in another video that we're gonna be releasing in just about a week, we're gonna compare different materials used for injection. We'll see how this resin compares to other options from lab cells and then much cheaper options like the FDM printers. So what are my concluding thoughts on this? Well, the printer is worth the hype. It's definitely much better than your conventional FDM printer. Granted, it's way more expensive. Now, the process here is also far more time consuming than it is with an FDM printer where you just pull your print off of the print bed. Washing with isopropyl alcohol is quite expensive on this big printer because you need a lot of IPA, but the washing station they send is very well engineered and it actually makes the task much easier than all other resin printers I've ever used before. Moving on to the cure chamber, I love that it's heated and very large so you can fit your parts in there and it properly cures them with the UV light 
and proper heating, which is required and desired for many use cases, such as making molds where we want better details in the final plastic injected part, which we don't quite get in an FDM printed mold, which leaves obvious layer lines. This video was dedicated to our first use of the Form 4L, but we're excited to try a bunch of other resins and different projects using this beast of a printer. So don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.